We're all fairly lucky to have ended up on this planet out of all the planets in the cosmos, maybe upwards of 2 trillion at latest count. Earth appears to have all we require. And yet, placed as we are, seemingly alone in this particular corner of the cosmos, some lament how genuinely constrained and lonely we are here. If only we could have a little more of this world that works so well. This is Space Time. And today we're answering the incredible question, what if there were two Earths? Do you require answers to the major questions? Then why not subscribe to Space Time for more videos like this one and ring the bell for more thought-provoking information. When you think about it, life on Earth is really amazing. It is estimated that there are over 8.7 million plant and animal species alive on this planet right now. Only about 1.2 million of those have been adequately cataloged by us humans, demonstrating that the full diversity of this planet is well beyond us right from the start. But the figures become much more startling when we consider Earth not just today, but over its entire history. While projections differ, it is believed that there were more than 4 billion species alive at some point in time. That's a lot of life moving through. And keep in mind that those figures are for whole species groups. If we counted every single individual member of every single species living and extinct, we'd be here for longer than the Earth has existed. However, one startling reality is that the vast majority of species that have ever existed have likewise perished out. There are about 9 million species alive now, yet it is a tiny, tiny percentage of the total number that has ever existed. And plainly, in the modern world, the issue of species extinction has taken on a whole new significance as we grapple with multiple, potentially existential concerns. So on the one hand, Planet Earth is really awesome, but on the other, we're scrambling to figure out how to get out of it if the need arises. And we are becoming increasingly conscious of how fragile our world's grandeur truly is. In an alternate universe, having another Earth to fall back on would be quite beneficial. So let's have a look at how that would function and also whether it is even conceivable in this reality. To begin, while there are several alternate hypotheses about a Planet 5, Planet 9, or counter-Earth in the solar system, we know with near confidence that there is no second Earth orbiting our Sunday, it is true. The great portion of the solar system remains undiscovered and inaccessible to humans. When we get beyond Pluto's orbit and into the Kuiper Belt, much of what we think we know is just educated speculation. However, scientists and astronomers generally believe that if another Earth-like world was so close, we would have discovered it by now. Furthermore, we're almost certain that there's nothing else of importance in our sun's habitable zone, so any Earth too would have to defy all assumptions of what a living world should be and look like. All of this implies that our hypothetical second Earth would most certainly be beyond the solar system, and we are immediately transported to a time when humanity is far more sophisticated than it is now. To even have a second Earth, we'd need to be an interplanetary species, possibly between levels 2 and 3 on the Kardashev scale and at least 10,000 years more developed than we are now. In the present, we are gradually beginning to chart possibly Earth-like worlds from afar ranking variously identified exoplanets based on factors such as expected surface temperature and the presence of liquid water. However, in a future, to Earth period we've advanced so far that we've methodically scoured all of the nearest surrounding space and visited a large number of the Earth-like worlds we've recorded, in order to determine which was the greatest of them. From there we launched the largest and most complex evacuation plan our society has ever seen, in order to relocate people, plants, animals and general Earthliness to this brave new world. Already it's evident that this isn't going to happen tomorrow, in anyone's lifetime or even for many, many generations to come. But what if you were there when it was happening? From a societal standpoint, the prospect of a second Earth is extremely appealing. The inquiries arrive thick and fast. Who stays here and who is transferred elsewhere? Who is the first person to step foot on the new Earth and who is the last to have a say in how Earth 2 is run? Would we even use Earth 2 as a living space or just a place to gather resources? In terms of who goes and who stays, perhaps a vote or lottery might be held in the run-up to the first few large evacuations. Would you want to win, or would you not want to win that lottery? It all depends on the situation. Assume that Earth is failing, that it has become a completely unsafe and volatile place due to environmental breakdown or the outbreak of large-scale war. 
then any serious route off of Earth would be something that many people would absolutely require. However, if this Earth is still stable and the second Earth is just being promoted as a site to redirect industrial and energy endeavors, many people would undoubtedly prefer to stay put rather than be transferred to a remote outpost without all the comforts of home. Of course, money has a lot of impact on what the second Earth becomes. If it is discovered to be better than Earth, as we know it, it is simple to imagine a scenario in which only the wealthy have access to it. Whereas everyone else is immediately priced out of even the slowest ships to this new promised land. That being said, and again imagining the bigger picture for these hypothetical circumstances, if mankind truly is an interplanetary race by this point, then money might not be so important after all. Because, in order to make effective use of a whole new planet, we must be at a point in time where we have advanced sufficiently to have overcome the kind of structure and inequality that currently exist. We nearly invariably discover designs for a hive mind effectively as shared awareness and knowledge at the higher levels of the Kardashev scale and others like it. That might be the level at which we'll need to be if we want to discover and colonize another planet. And at this point, humans would work less as individuals and more as a community, with no such thing as a rich-slash-poor gap. Finally, and possibly more than anything else, there is the rise of machines to contend with. In the 21st century, we're far more receptive to sending probes and rovers to other planets in our solar system rather than crude trips with real people. There are several reasons behind this, not the least of which is how difficult it is from an engineering and propulsion standpoint to get people off the ground and into space. But maybe the most important reason we send probes first is that it is infinitely safer. When only robots are present, no one needs to die if a mission fails. So why should it be any different in the case of Earth too? The first residents on any other globe will very definitely be machines, which is neither romantic nor exciting. Advanced artificial entities that can either pave the path for humankind to visit in the future or simply make the place their own. Indeed, many people believe that we are much more likely to find artificial life than organic life in our continuous hunt for alien life. But what's your opinion? If you were given the option, how would you use Earth too? Do you believe this is something that might ever happen? Or are people doomed to live and die exclusively on this planet? Tell us in the comments. Because that's what would happen if two Earths existed. What are your thoughts? Is there anything we left out? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date on our latest content.